Hey everyone, Drew Bees Apiary here. Today is November 17th, and at least here in my part of Georgia, we have pretty much the remainder of today and tomorrow, as far as nice, warm, sunny weather. I think after then, Friday onward, it's gonna get pretty cold moving forward. And by that point, we're already around Thanksgiving, which is around the time that, you know, I'm kind of expecting us to cont consistently get the cooler temperatures. I know in Georgia, sometimes we get the wild swings where you get a day or you know two here or there that are a lot warmer than they should be. But the reality is, is this video today is kind of gonna be me preparing the bees for winter. So as you can see right here, the bees are still taking sugar water because it is such a nice day. And it's kind of funny, I did not have these feeders out overnight. Sometimes I leave them out there. But last night I did not, in fact, I brought them in and I came out here around, say, 9.30, 9, 9.30 this morning. Temperatures were in the low 50s, and sure enough, the bees were just sitting here waiting, like, almost like stray animals, just sitting there on the wood ledge, kind of like, hey, where's, where's the sugar water at? I thought that was really interesting, because again, normally in those low 50s, I did not expect to see bees out flying about, because I figured, well, it's not good for them. You know, they, they slow down once it starts getting too cool but they must have been willing and ready for it or they know something that I don't know. So, you know, today I'm just mentioning that. You see the jars out here. We'll go over to the hives here in a minute. The, the hives do still have those top feeder boxes that I'm not a big fan of that I just checked them this morning and not a whole lot of sugar water in two of them. Uh, we'll go over there and I'll talk about that a little bit more, but Long story short, this is gonna be the it for those top hive feeders because we are getting into the cooler temperatures. They're about to for sure stop drinking it altogether. So we're gonna be transitioning to not only removing those boxes, but putting um, inner covers on that the ones I modified from one of my earlier videos. And we're gonna be putting the rapid round feeders with the dry sugar feed on the inside instead. So that way they have something to do if they need to. So I'm gonna walk over there, and um, in fact, we can kind of do that now. So now I wanna show you the jars real quick. So again, these are those, this is just one example of the inner cover. You can see I kind of modified the inner so it can actually fit that rapid round feeder. You'll see me install that later. I got the ventilation holes on both sides. So this is gonna be the part that's actually gonna sit on top, right? So the rapid round feeder is gonna go like there, sugar, the dry sugar feed's gonna go in there and they should all get that today. So, we'll go over here real quick. As mentioned in my, earlier in the video, at this point, while they all had that sugar syrup on top, yellow has been drinking it down every time I give it to them. Blue, not so much. I mean, they, they definitely have been touching it, but not as much as I would like, especially considering that top super right there. That was largely empty a week ago of nectar, and I don't know why they're not taking it, but as you can see, everyone, the bees are very busy today. And again, I just think they know something that maybe we don't know or maybe we do know. And to me, that's, I think they know this is their last push to get ready for the winter. So, uh, green hive, surprisingly, historically, they do not drink the sugar water. They were actually touching it. So the past week, a uh, week ago, I filled up their top hive feeder with some sugar water, and. They were still a little bit left, but it looks like they actually were drinking it. Red, for whatever reason, as aggressive, and you know, this used to be one of my strongest hives, they just, they didn't touch it at all. All the sugar syrup that was up top was untouched from a week ago. And I've done everything from trying to, like, get them to be interested in it, they just don't care. The red hive just does not want the sugar syrup up top. And I don't know if that's like a carniolan thing, because again, not, not to say that I know 100% sure that that's what these bees are, but they, I, these were bees that I got from um, up in North Georgia, um, and I believe these were Carniolans, but again, can't be certain. Most of these, these three over here, they're largely Italians or a mix of such, and you know, I don't know if that plays a factor between the two different subspecies, but these are a much darker um, color of bee, so that's kind of why I think that they're a Carniolan. I don't know if carnies don't do as well with taking sugar syrup not sure but they didn't have as much of a problem with it a while ago but it just seems like the past month or so they just don't really care 
but I'm gonna go in here first only because there's a little bit of sugar syrup up top. I'm actually gonna dump what little is left into those because again, they're just chugging it down. And then I'm gonna start to work on this one first, get them ready for winter, and then just kind of go down the line from there because again, no point in, no more topping off needed. It is what it is where they're at. I might have to redistribute the supers that are on top to figure out who gets what because this one was largely empty those yellow was pretty well stacked blue was pretty well stacked minus that top super the last time i was out here and obviously green's got nothing on it and my goal is for all three to have the deep and a super going into winter as well as a a top box that is going to have the uh the inner the inner uh wrapped around feeder so i'll put a, a, a tiny super box on top so that way they can feed that way but Let's get to work getting that all set up, and I will give you an update once we move forward from there. So I should have recorded what I did, but basically that top high feeder box right there still had some sugar water in it. That all got dumped into here. There's a lot of bees trying to drink sugar water in there, so give them one last push to do that. They can fill up that top super if they need to or wherever else with whatever's in there for the time being. Red bees don't want to do that. So they're getting the inner cover back on, the modified one with the vents, right? And this, because obviously ventilation is going to be blocked right here. You can kind of see all the bees moving around on the inside right now, right? They're getting used to a new lid, so to speak, on there. They'll probably propolize these up pretty well, depending on how much ventilation they want going into the winter. But once the white feeder, which I'll put on, goes right here, uh, there's not going to be a good way for moisture to, you know, pretty much condensate up on the top. So that's what those are for. So I'm going to quick put this lid back on. And then I'm going to come back out here in a bit once I get my super. And then that way. They'll be good to go. Once I dump some fresh sugar, because I need to go, I need to go buy some more sugar. Because I am out. So now, it'll be just like that. And again, I still need to go in here, everybody, and actually kind of check and see what the situation up top is. As in, you know, I took a peek at that top super. I could tell there was some honey in there, some nectar but uh there's a lot of dead like empty frames i should say empty super frames so i'll probably reorganize that a little bit before i definitively say that they're good to go so that needs to be one step and then i'll move down the line from there throughout this afternoon so i'm gonna pause the video just kind of give you a heads up on that and we'll move along all right folks we're gonna start in the red hive so checking the stores before I decide what I'm putting on there. Okay. Let's do a quick check on this before anything else. So my guess is I'm gonna have to give them either trade out some frames. take one from somewhere else. So that's pretty light, as I expected. Right. Okay. So I'm taking any useless frame for the most part out here. I might leave like one, but anything I don't think is gonna be useful to them. Come out. Useless. Mm -hmm. Probably won't be saying too much for this part, so I'll either be quiet and let some background noise happen for you all, or I'll just shut the video off and then skip ahead to a better update.
caught a wasp trying to steal. So just yanked it out by its back end so it couldn't pinch or you know, couldn't sting me and just crush it right over here in case you're wondering what that was. Now that the hive is open, any and all, he's gonna take this as an advantage to rob or steal, depending on how you look at it. It's pretty much the same thing, but obviously we use the robbing term. Wasps, which is what I just killed, will take any opportunity to get whatever they want. And obviously they're definitely competing with the bees this time of the year over at my sugar water container. They're very active, it seems like. So I've killed a lot of wasps. All right, so the good news is while most of these aren't necessarily packed to the gills full, there's more sugar, or you know, there's more uh, nectar in here than I would have thought. So that makes me happy to see. I'm gonna put the lid back on just for a minute so I can think about how I wanna do this. But essentially what I'm probably gonna do, I'm probably gonna take those two empty frames out because there's nothing on it, give them two good frames of honey, and then their super box should be doable for the winner. So that is good. Let me just go into the bottom box. I'll pause the video, see how we're looking on the bottom now. So here's my bottom brood chamber, Red Hive. Without me yanking these out, because they got it pretty well sealed down, and to be honest, I'm gonna kinda let them have that. Looks like only two of the deep frames aren't, I mean, they, they're drawn out comb, but almost no resources in it. So basically, they're working with the eight frames from the left. And so I figure, between the eight frames on the left and the super that they're gonna have on top, has a little bit, but I'm gonna give them two more full frames of honey. I think they should be just fine with the supplemental feed. So it'll be tight, but, Think they'll make it work so like i said again this isn't a inspection necessarily to find my queen i know she's in there but i'm gonna get them sealed up and ready right now so i just want to share that with y'all but red so far so good all right so you can kind of see where we're at now i did finish my inspection the lower part of the red hive there was a queen in there there was some brood not much but you know as much as you'd expect so of the bottom brood chamber two of their frames were completely empty but the rest were pretty looking pretty good and i mentioned in this honey super below this empty super honey super below i would say it's maybe 30 to 45 percent full of at least nectar uh, it's not capped honey by any means but it's enough for them to have something to work with so i gave them two cap frames of super honey that I've been holding on to since the summer harvest or I should say the second summer harvest because I had a really tiny one in early July that I did that I didn't end up um, you know processing any and putting it in jars I just kept it to the side for a situation like this where maybe you need to feed the bees a little back some of their honey that they work so hard to work for so I don't have to have it right now I'm okay with giving them some of their honey back so that's what I'm gonna do and right now I'm back on the top box, about to put this back into here. I need to get these bees back in there because they are in the wrong place right now. So that's gonna be our little top circle feeder, all right? I'm gonna put some sugar in here. We got the vent holes, right? Okay. Let's get this sugar open. That way, they have something to do. Now that they're not going to be getting wet sugar anymore. That should be good enough. Make it so it's not overflowing. All right. This was just a four pound bag of sugar. So, you know, I barely just right there to fill one of those large top feeders. That was maybe a quarter of the bag. And then I'm gonna put this lid back on because again, they can come up through this hole, crawl around on here all day want. There's a yellow jacket. Let's see if I can get him real quick, him or her. Got it. Dead yellow jacket. So that's on, 
they're in there. To me, this hive is good. So, lid's gonna go back on. We'll check on it on a warm day. And you know, I mentioned earlier that I'm gonna be, have to be coming out here to do a uh, an oxalic wand inspection sometime in early December. But that right there is what I want the rest of the hives to roughly look like. Deep, super with actual drawn honey, and then inner cover, and then up top the actual uh, the feeder, so that way they can go up there and get all the dry sugar. So that's the idea. I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna figure out which one I'm going to work on after this. Just a quick thing before I move on to Green Hive. Um, with this Hive Butler, I mentioned it er earlier in one of my vids on this channel. The one thing that I've really liked about this was what I, the purpose it just served just now on that Red Hive out there. So I just mentioned on that Red Hive, they had some undrawn supers. I think their stores are fine. Um, they're not great they're totally adequate I've I've definitely had better prepared hives going into winter but the thing is is why not set them up for success you know if you have the honey I know as a beekeeper the incentive is oh I got the honey I got to put it in a jar you know like take as much as you can but you know all beekeepers know you've got to leave some honey back for the bees and a lot of these supers that are were in here I'll kind of open it up and show you it wasn't even that many we're talking about it was 10 in total. It was 10 supers of honey that I got this past July, all right? So you can kind of see in there, uh, there's a few that are missing because I've already taken out and used some of them. But I, when this, when I did this harvest, this was in July, again, this is like nothing. This is very little, the equivalent of one entire super, but I purposely did not harvest these frames that were already fully filled up with honey because I knew a situation that happened could happen again which is pretty much you have a hive that's lagging behind. Maybe you uh, have been feeding them sugar water or whatever, and they're just not taking it. They're not taking any of the feed and you're worried about them going into the winter. Well, they will take this, obviously. They'll take those, uh, those capped honey frames. And so I just gave them two to kind of boost their numbers. Uh, give them a little bit of a better chance to make it through the whole winter because they will absolutely use that. And guess what, if they don't, not a big deal because come summer or not not come summer but come spring they will be that much better prepared and have that much less likely of a chance of starvation doesn't mean they can't starve obviously anything can happen but you know why not give your bees as good of a chance as they can get so this is a situation where i didn't want to be greedy i didn't want to put all these in jars you know to sell i could have but i had a feeling this could happen and it did so just keep that in the back of your mind. Not saying you need to do that, but you know, having an insurance policy for your bees can always be good. So, you know, hopefully that benefited them. I'm sure it will. But the thing I like about this little hive butler is it is an easy way to store capped honey organized. Cause you know, if you just had your normal Lowe's or Home Depot Tupperware, you know, that stuff's gonna be all over the place. You're gonna be breaking up the honey frames. It's gonna be, it's gonna be an absolute mess. So honey's gonna be going there and there's already some honey on the bottom of this but i'll probably end up just letting them free for all that tomorrow most likely our last warm day here in georgia it looks like so just want to talk about that real quick and the only other thing i want to mention is with these hive covers i didn't really mention it when when you saw me putting it on the red hive but the idea of this obviously is you know this is going on up top you're filling that with the sugar and you're not putting the little depending on if you do own one of these or not, the rapid feeders, you could put the little cap on. There's really no point of it, because again, that's more if you're feeding the liquid water, since we're not doing that right now. I bought these just for the purpose of, you know, feeding in the winter months, dry sugar. So it was more organized. But the nice thing is, throughout the winter, as moisture, you know, pretty much goes to the top of the hive, because, you know, above this, you'd have the hive cover, right? You know, it's gonna do the same on the inside of this because all those bees you know you got some blow out right here where air is going to be rising but you're going to also have some come through that middle hole and when it does and it comes on here and on the inside of condensates drips down it's going to make that dry sugar almost a little harder a little wetter 
and the bees will actually eat that. The bees won't really eat the dry sugar just as it is. It needs to be in another, another form and that's why you see people make candy boards or fondant, something like that to feed. Me just putting dry sugar in here just as it is isn't really going to do anything. They're not going to they're not going to take that really. It needs to it needs to kind of like hard and crystallize, basically get wet a little bit and the bees will actually go to it and take it. So that's the point of this too. Aside from just bees getting in there and the lid being like this is water's going to drip down, condensate and then they'll be able to go at it. Make sense? Okay. So, just want to make sure I mention that before we go into their hives cuz there's a good chance I'll miss mentioning it again and I wanted to mention it right now. But just those two things, just have an insurance policy if you do. You don't have to, but you'll be glad you did when the worst case scenario happens and then just another way to feed with those rapid feeders. All right, here, I'm gonna go to the green one now next. All right, here we are at the green hive. Really good cluster, I'm really liking what I'm seeing when I came in here. Um, they were actually taking some of the sugar water, which is rare for them, up top, even though I'm done feeding it. Uh, at this point, there was so little left, and they really only would have the rest of the day today and the rest of the day tomorrow. So at this point, if they really want sugar water bad enough, since I'm about to start feeding the dry sugar, they can go over to the, uh, the little jars over there, the external feeding far away. So, all right, I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna check those corners, because the corners are always the problem in the green hive, where they never have anything. But I'm wondering if they've been doing a better job of preparing just in the little bit of time that I last saw them. Seems their population is a lot more robust than other times that I've been out here. And that's good to know going this late into the year. So. Top, but nothing to write home about. Okay. Put that right there. A little bit more, that's better to see. Still not good, but not bad either at the top. A little bit of loose nectar here and there. So that one I'm gonna put closest to them. earlier red hive even though I didn't show you guys on video I did find my queen she was still marked and everything so same one that I've had for a bit tiny little cluster kind of curious if we have anything at all in here this one's a little bit easier to navigate because it is such a smaller hive but they're still going to get a super full of something hopefully yeah honey and nectar Honey and a lot of fresh nectar on there. So, it's been good. At this point, I'm gonna start to reverse the frames. side. It's also good to do these inspections, not just on warm days because it's, uh, you know, you don't want to chill the brood. Well, obviously the bees temper temperament is a lot better on a day like this. If they see you coming in on a cold day, 
they are more likely to sting. I learned that lesson the hard way last year. I got cocky one day and thought I could just go in there and just check on my bees and in winter. And it wasn't that overly cold of a day, but it was still a day in the mid 50s and they were not having it. So, always pick a good day if you can. Full frames. And by full, I do mean full bees. There's my queen right there. See her? See the white dot? She's creeping along. Good. I see a little bit of frames and, you know, capped, capped brood in here and on both sides. So let's get her back in there real quick. Probably doesn't want to be out here too long. Keep, keep working. Good to see a queen. Especially going into fall like we are well we are in fall but you know for Georgia it's better than some states it's not like we're in like Florida where you don't really have the season but still one of those running jokes with Georgia and fall unless you live up in the mountains it happens so fast down here it's like a week and a half two weeks tops and then you're already in winter so. so I'm gonna speed up through this I'll pause the video like I said, I'm going to start from here, finish our, we saw our queen, so that's good. I'm just going to get, check one last frame, push it in, check my side frame, and then continue working. All right, when well, we skipped ahead to blue and yellow at the same time, reason being is I'm just trying to figure out which super I'm taking to give to green, which right now the camera is sitting directly on top of green. So I just want to see how far along these supers were filled out. I have a feeling it's going to be more on the yellow side because this blue was added very late. And I'm kind of impressed that they've put what they've put in here in such a short period of time. This one might need to come off. I'm not sure. Mm. put this one on the side that one might need to come off yeah that one's not that great Look one a little better filled out. But I've still got about eight filled honey supers over there that if I need to bring them over, I can do that. Is at least better than those ones. Okay, that was a lot easier than I thought. 
So these four are workable of leaving. These other five that I just took out, they like expected, they, they don't have enough to, they're just taking up space. If I have to use them as filler, I will. But I'm most curious about these ones over here in the yellow hive. Let's see where we're at with these. Once I finish checking all these, I'll give you all an update as to where we stand, so that way you're not just seeing me check individual frames, and I'll let you know what I moved where. So one thing I'm doing, just to kind of show you all, you know, when you combine bees, you know, the, the preferred method, right, is, like if, if I was gonna take bees from here and put them in here, all right, I would put a piece of newspaper, you've always heard of the newspaper method, you put a box on top of it, cut some holes in the newspaper so hopefully you know the bees that are up top that are the strangers to the ones below they smell each other through the newspaper and they can chew their way in right and as they chew their way in they meet each other and hopefully they're friends by that point in time because they're used to each other's smell what i've been doing right now is i put an empty super on top of the green hive because that was my goal and i'm taking honey supers from the hive that doesn't need it which is the yellow one and i'm putting them on here well, it's near impossible to get all of the bees off of the supers unless you use like um, Honey Bandit or something like that, make all the bees that are up top move to the bottom. I didn't do that today. But what I did do instead is as I'm moving frames over and shaking off as many of their bees as possible, there's always gonna be some stragglers. I'm trying to hit them with, this is just some sugar water. All right, it's just normal two to one. So as they're in there, transfer it. There's some left over, you give them a quick light spritz. Right? And you're like, well, why, why are you spraying them with sugar water? And what that's doing is it's coating them in it, hopefully. I mean, bees don't need to be getting wet, but there's enough time for them to get cleaned up. But the idea is these new bees and themselves are gonna be self-grooming each other. And the sugar water that's on these strange bees, these bees are gonna help clean them up. And by that point, they should be friends by that point. So it's almost like a, you know, an unintentional way of kind of being like, hey, you know, I'm gonna clean you up, but it's because I want the sugar water that's on your body. You're a stranger to me. And then by the time they've been, you know, licking each other clean, then they're friends, hopefully, perfect world. So it's just another technique. If you're gonna combine bees, you could give some light spritz of those stranger bees with some sugar water. And hopefully by the time they clean each other up, they'll be uh, okay with one another. So let me just keep doing that. I just wanna mention that real quick while I'm, moving frames to and from, and that's just a little tip for you. everyone um, at this point the only hive I didn't get a chance to finish today is yellow so I'm gonna finish that first thing in the morning but I expect to see similar stuff so overall I'm very happy with the preparation um, you might be able to see that black tape on the front of two of these boxes that's just uh, basically where the, the shim essentially has like a little uh, cut hole for the uh, inner cover so 
the inner cover had that kind of upper entrance and I don't want there to be an upper entrance entrance this time of the year so I had to seal that up I'm sure I'll have to reapply that as needed but for the time being the duct tape will work um, pretty much they're all all three of the green blue red are good to go blue easily the most packed full of honey I mean they have more capped honey than those other two obviously I ended up giving all nine frames of honey that I had stored in my hive butler between those three hives because a few had some frames of supers that just weren't fully filled out, either had some nectar or just largely empty. And so I'm going to let them rob out the frames that were originally in there. And that way the only frames, for the most part, I can't say it's definitively, but for the most part, most of what's in the super is going to be capped honey or at least frames that are filled with nectar and not a bunch of just unused drawn out space so they should be in a good spot like i said saw queens in red and green today did not see queen in blue but i did see fresh eggs which again is kind of interesting this time of the year so in uh, or i shouldn't say fresh eggs but you know uh, larva that was well in the development cycle probably five days so i feel pretty good about there being a queen still in there um I will get to yellow tomorrow. Yellow, same thing will happen. I'll remove that sugar feeder from up top. The whole reason it's still on there is because they seem to be the ones drinking the fastest and I will let them continue to drink if they are able to do it. So uh, tomorrow will probably be the last day there's gonna be any drinking at all. So it's kind of why I got ahead of it and started removing. So overall, I feel pretty good. I'll maybe do, whether I do a, another video about yellow hive or not tomorrow morning, just depends on how important or pertinent you guys need to know anything from it but otherwise i won't include it so roughly this is kind of how the frank you know all th four hives are going to look going into the winter so after today you know I've, I've topped up with their dry sugar up top the next time i'll be out here probably won't be till you know first second or so week of winter uh, in december and it might be when i do my next treatment of to go against Varroa and that'll be an oxalic wand vaporizer so most likely that'll be the next video don't want to be going into them too often anymore now just look for a, a random Georgia day that breaks 60 that'll be the only situation I'll be going in but this is pretty much them prepared for the winter so I uh, hope all y'all that are keeping bees are well prepared ready to go based upon wherever you're living I guess we'll find out here in a few months you guys have a great week I'll talk to you soon take care